All right, guys, time for video number four in this series. We are counting up to the best players on the 2022 Seahawks. Today we are doing number eight. Yesterday was number nine, Charles Cross. Today is going to be a guy who there's going to be some interesting wars about. Now, I don't think anybody's going to dispute this guy deserves to be on the top ten list. I think that some people may even argue he should be a little bit higher. Uh, there are going to be some people who think it's about appropriate. I think most Seahawks fans agree this guy should be top 10, but the interesting argument with this guy will come in what happens now with this player. So we're going to have some fun debates over the course of this offseason as we move towards free agency, but this player, for his performance in 2022, definitely deserves to be on the top 10. Let me know what you guys think after the video. I will see you guys later. Let's go. So now we have a guy who I think some people will argue should be a little bit higher. There might even be a couple people who say he should be like in the top five. I'm putting him here at number eight, just partially because of positional importance and also partially because of what happened at the very end of the season. But I cannot deny the top 10 credentials of kicker Jason Myers. Jason Myers was a polarizing figure for the Seahawks this offseason. Uh, some people wanted to move on from him, and I was among them. I definitely wanted to move off of Myers. He had just had his worst season, and he may have been the least valuable kicker in the league in 2021. And I wanted to move off of him because he was about to be making a lot of money. I wanted to try to find a young kicker who would be cheaper. I didn't think that it was possible to find a kicker who would be worse than Myers was in 2021. He missed a lot of really important kicks in close Seahawks losses. But... We kept him. On the last year of his four-year contract that he signed several years ago, we kept him, and he replicated the elite season he had in 2020. So, just to recap here, 2019, average, 2020, best kicker in the game, 2018, uh, sorry, 2021, worst kicker in the game, 2022, top three. So, it's been a wild ride with Jason Myers, but where we land right now is an extremely elite kicker. There are only a couple guys who you could argue in the NFL are better, one of whom, Cameron Dicker, only played about two-thirds of the season. So Jason Myers is definitely in that top three conversation right now. And as you can see in this tweet that I have on screen here, the first ever NFL PA Players All-Pro First Team had one Seahawk on it. It was Jason Myers. Now, is the NFLPA Players All-Pro team credible? We don't know yet. They just started it. But clearly, Myers deserves at least consideration as a first-team All-Pro kicker. We'll see where he lands on the AP team, but Jason Myers, with what he did in 2022, is certainly one of the best players on the team. You go over to PFF, you can see that his score is very high. It's 78, and it's not hard to see why. He made 34 field goals in the year of 2022, which was second in the NFL behind, I believe, only Justin Tucker. And his field goal percentage, missing only three field goals on the year, I believe it was like 93.3. You are talking about a guy who is only behind, I believe, three kickers in overall accuracy. And let's remember, one of his misses was a bad snap, not his fault at all, the Detroit game. The two snaps at the end of the year were on him. Admittedly, he was kicking in not great conditions in Seattle. I understand sometimes things happen. And obviously, the last one he missed bounced off the crossbar, and he redeemed himself 10 minutes later anyway. Whatever. But Jason Myers was great. He made 6 of 6 from 50-plus yards. So you can't say it was just all short kicks. He made a lot of long kicks, too. In fact, he might have been better on his long kicks than his short kicks. And also, while we are here talking about Jason Myers, he made all but one of his extra points. And we know that there have been some years where Myers missed a lot of extra points. Um, kickers in general these days often miss three or four extra points a season. It's, it's becoming hard for them. So the fact that Myers made every extra point this year except for one is also a huge push in his direction. So in that regard, in terms of just kicking field goals... Myers may have been the best kicker in the league this year. He didn't miss any games. He didn't, like, get injured for a kick, and then we had to send Dixon out there to kick an extra point or anything like that. 
No, he went out there every week, every time, every kick he was up for, he did. Now, where he may have fallen off a little bit was the kickoff area. He was just okay at kicking the ball off. It was like league average. Not enough touchbacks. But you can't say it ever hurt us because our kickoff coverage is good. In fact, in a lot of circumstances, not having a touchback was a positive thing because the return would be so short. So, honestly, even when Jason Myers wasn't putting the ball into the end zone on the touchback, I think you could make a pretty good argument that he was still putting the team in a good position. So, Jason Myers, look, it's a kicker, right? Obviously, they don't control the fate of the team nearly as much as, like, a quarterback or an offensive lineman or a wide receiver or a running back. There's a difference in value. The kicker only really becomes valuable when the situation comes up, and the situation can be completely dictated by other positions. I realize that. But there is going to come a point in the season when your kicker matters. And sometimes it's obvious, like last week, or uh, well, a couple weeks ago against the Rams, when he missed the game winner and then made the game winner. But there are going to be little moments throughout the season as well. Like he made, I think it was a 48-yarder against Denver, and we ended up winning that game by one. What if he misses that kick? We probably lose that game. Remember, every time a kicker misses a field goal, the other team takes over in typically really good field position. So when you get those opportunities to knock in long kicks, I think he had a 60-yarder against the Saints, ultra valuable that you do it. And we now go into an offseason where before the season started, I was a thousand percent sure we were going to be done with Myers. He was going to be gone after his contract was up and we were going to get a new kicker. We still might, but now we have an option. Myers is only going to be 32 next year. Kickers play into their 40s. You could go to Myers and say, hey, you know, five million a year. Maybe it's a two-year or three-year deal. I don't know, but if you do it, you can at least hang your hat on his 2022 and say, hey, he was one of the best kickers in the league. We should pay him like he's one of the best kickers in the league. And as a Seahawks fan, I'm not saying that that would be the decision that I would have made, but it's a decision that is very defensible. And at the very least, I can understand why you would do it. You can see these teams out there right now that have kicker problems. You don't want to become one of those teams. Now, is there any guarantee that Jason Myers won't become a kicker problem if he comes back next year? Of course not. He was a kicker problem just last season. But for 2022, not only was he excellent, but he also gives the team an option that I didn't think they had. An option to keep him, pay him a lot of money, which is not great, but you get what you pay for often in the NFL, and not have to play the carousel game of trying to find a new kicker. So I'm putting Jason Myers at number eight. He other than the last two weeks, basically did his job perfectly. There's nothing I can say. Even the kickoff stuff doesn't really matter that much because our kickoff coverage was so good. So, Jason Myers, he he did it all. He pretty much did it all. I wish he could have knocked in that game-winning field goal at the end of the fourth quarter against the Rams to cap off his season. But he found redemption anyway, so it's all good. All right. I will see you guys later. Let me know what you think. Would you put this guy higher? Would you put him lower? Do you think a kicker doesn't belong on a top 10 list? Let me know. Catch y'all later. Go Hawks.